Hey guys, how's it going? And since it's uh, about a week after Season 8 ended, I wanted to bring up my reasonings for why Ranked doesn't really feel like Ranked anymore. It doesn't really live up to its name. And most of this is due to, I don't know, just the degradation of both the community and the gameplay aspects, which are going to be my two main categories for this discussion. Now, I wanted to start off with the community side of this. And the start of this would be the salt fest that this turns into. Every season you see it. Somebody gets outplayed early in the game, or even later in the game, and somebody else just sits there and rags on them the entire rest of the game. And a lot of that can be due to detonations, it could be due to a misplay by the player, or it could be due to the player not being able to turn out because there were three ships aiming at him. Whether it was outplayed or not, you'll just see it... it it's distracting, the guy will get bashed on the entire game, and it really sucks. At the same time, you get this sort of teammate roulette because of people who spam games. You'll see guys with over a thousand games every season because they're just pressing that battle button, sending a ship into the queue, they'll press W once they get into the game, run into the enemy fleet, do a bit of damage, and as soon as they sink, they switch ships, go back to port, and start another one. They'll have two or three ships going all at once, just hoping that teams will carry them to ranked one. And it's becoming more and more proliferant as the seasons go on. More and more people are doing it, and more and more... Or you're seeing more and more of this teammate roulette thing where teams will get this person on them, and it'll be an instant loss, or it'll be called a really hard carry, just because it's, it's useless. The person's just YOLOing into the team, and they're putting in, I think the highest one was 2,000 games this season. Just yellowing their ship. And for a season where you're only having, what, a couple weeks to do it? It's, it's, it's really pathetic. And it's hard to say that it's a good strategy for the queue. And it's worth anything to the game. Because it's just stupid overall. There's absolutely no reason why it should even exist anymore. Uh, it's it, and like I said, it's it's the team rate, teammate roulette aspect where we got this guy on our team and now it's gonna suck. It's just how it is now, it seems. And then bouncing off that, you have the elitists, the people who think they're the best, who are going to tr try to direct their team, and if they lose the ship, it's an. It, it, if they lose their ship, it's an instant loss. The teammates suck. Everybody sucks. This wasn't going to be a win. Uh, they couldn't do enough to carry their teammates, even though they're at the bottom of the team. And they're better than everybody else, and their stats are there to prove it. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have to say too much about why these people are kind of annoying. But you definitely see an increase in that. And bouncing off of that, you see an increase in uh, people who get shot and then claim it's hack and pay to win. Uh, I guess you see that in randoms too, but I don't know. You see you see a little bit more of the hacker claims in rank just because people get really tilted that they got killed. You'll also see certain ships along, well, going off of the certain players being instant losses, you see certain ships being known as instant losses. Uh, there, Every season forms a sort of meta where some ships are valued way more than others but if you take the lesser valued ships into ranked, you're causing your team to lose directly. Some cases this is right, though some players know how to make these ships work. I know people who ranked out in Pensacola during the tier 7 seasons. Um, and they got flamed for it, I guarantee it. Because Pensacola was not considered a very good ship back then, it was way before its buffs. And I don't know. People would just flame them, but they'd sit there and they'd carry the games and they'd actually rank out before people playing the quote-unquote meta ships. But I guess that's dabbling a bit into gameplay as per why these ships are meta. Either way, it's it just creates that sort of salt fest atmosphere because, oh, we just lost because this person spawned in with this ship. Yeah. But going off of that, you also have burnout. And... Season 8 was a big proponent to this. Like, massive. It came right after clan battles and right on top of an event for New Year's that you had to go through two campaigns to even clear the event, and the event was limited. So, if you wanted those camos for the New Year's event, you had to bo do both randoms 
and ranked at the same time. And I say this because you are sure as hell not going to play the Duke of York in a tier 8 ranked game. Mostly because it's a tier 7, if I remember correct. I don't know, I think it is a tier 7, yeah. But you're not going to be able to switch up ships as fluidly. Like, say you're trying to do the destroyer missions, but your main in ranked is battleships. You're not going to YOLO out a destroyer and try to get two destroyer kills in battles where sometimes there'd only be one destroyer just because you want some missions done instead of getting your ranks done. That's not how it works. And especially coming right after the clan battle season, you're seeing a lot of players just kind of blow off the rank season because it doesn't seem that worth it. And it's just burning players out because it's time limits on time limits on time limits. Ah, it, it was just a... It's, very, very poorly scheduled, and I think right after this uh, season's over, we're going to have another clan battle season coming up. So I'm thinking we're going to see a lot of players just up and say they're kind of bored with the game and get really burnt out really fast. And this is all leading up to less participation, which leads to a bit of the gameplay issues with longer queue times. But as you drop... Uh, participation you're going to see longer queues you're going to see less people doing anything you're going to see more of that increased game spamming and it's just going to create a very small atmosphere of people who do ranked and eventually when those players decide it's not worth it anymore that's when you start to see the mode fail i don't know it's it's really hard to say if stuff like that's fixable in a way i guess better scheduling but even with the whole Saltfest atmosphere, there's the Save a Star aspect. And I'm going to talk about the Save a Star a little, little bit more in gameplay. But for the community, it's I wanted to talk about the teamwork aspect of this. Because people who are working to Save a Star aren't playing to win for the team. They're playing to win for themselves and keep that star and not have to worry about dropping back a rank. And it's not something that doesn't escape people's minds that they can save a star. It's actually something people work for because they want to be top of their team. They want to save that star even if their team decides to throw in the last five minutes. So you're seeing people go out and they're damage farming rather than shooting destroyers. They're shooting ships that are going to give them more EXP. They're doing 40% of damage to one ship and then switching targets because it's not giving them as much EXP towards that win. They're playing the ships that they know are going to get that first uh, that first place in the te losing team bonus, and they're not playing ships that could they could actually carry the team in, and they're not making as risky plays as they could. So, I don't know. It's really hard to say you should take out the one person on the losing team saves a star aspect, because it is kind of useful. Some people do try and their teams are just, they don't get good players or everybody messes up. And so that one guy kind of deserves to save a star. But without any restrictions on it, it's become sort of a uh, farm fest to see who can save it when the game looks like it's going to lose. There's also the aspect of stress versus reward. And this is going off the salt fest idea. Ranked is stressful. It's a competitive game mode where people are trying to either take a star from that enemy team and go up a rank, or they're afraid of losing a rank themselves. So they're trying to work with that stress and get a win out. But the rewards aren't that great. You've seen every season the regular awards just for going up ranks are getting less and less and less. And I think this season it was like five of one of the special flags. It's nothing significant. And it continues to dwindle, which is making me wonder why they can even consider them true rewards anymore. Sure, there's some doubloons tossed in there, but even that's been less than before, I do believe. And then there's the end prize, the final prize for ranking out to rank 1. Uh, so every two seasons so far, minus this one, it's been two seasons where you win a flag at the end of the season that doesn't do anything. It's just a cosmetic flag, it has no bonuses, and it, you can stick it on your ship if you don't have Military Month Contributor or something nice. And then you'll get a ship on that third season. So say you're averaging 150 battles a season, which is good. It's not bad. It's probably about average. Well, maybe not. I don't know. 
I can't say I look too much into how many battles people have. But that's almost 400 battles, somewhere in there. 450 battles if you're doing 150. So 450 battles gets you a ship. Assuming that the meta was okay and you didn't get drugged down by game spammers at some point. Is that worth the stress? You're going months without getting any reward other than that single flag. You're going months without getting anything else other than that little stockpile of flags they throw at you for ranking up. How is that any better than just getting to rank 15 and calling it quits? You get a flag there too. I don't know, it's just... It doesn't seem that great. And then we get to Season 8. What was my problem with Season 8's prizes? Okay, so, instead of a ship, here's two camouflages for the ship that you have already. Okay. What were the camouflages? Well, they didn't show you. They never announced what the camouflages looked like. They never announced what the bonuses are. There's no hype for that. How are you supposed to get a player to say, hey, I want those camouflages, if they aren't going to show what the hell the camouflages are? And this just bothered me to the utmost degree because where is your push to actually go get something that you don't even know what it's going to be? Finally, after the ranked season was over and after they handed out all the flags, people started posting pictures of what these camouflages looked like and what their bonuses are. And sure, they have nice bonuses, but they look like utter shit. And that's kind of my opinion, but it's mostly because unlike the original camouflages that came with the flint and the black, they don't stand out. They're that standard dull red and black camouflage that you get normally, and then it's got an alligator face like halfway down, or it's got an alligator mouth, teeth, I guess, pattern, halfway down the ship. They don't look that fancy. They don't really stand out at all. And it definitely doesn't leave a, diff a different symbol on your ship just for having them. You're just another flint or black that has a different camouflage and is earning a little bit more stuff. So if you're going for the cosmetic value of it, it's it's not that great. It just looks like any other really ship out there. I mean, even the white camouflages from the regular flint and black look different. They look special. They got the flames coming up the side. It's it's really standout. And you don't get that. And then, of course, Wargaming has started a new rumor that they're going to offer the flint black and, in the future, the Stalingrad, the clan battles reward ship, as prizes to... Or They'll gonna make not prizes, but they're going to make them available to the masses who haven't ranked out all these times, who haven't gotten in a clan that can or haven't put in the clan games to get them up to Typhoon and get those wins. So they're gonna make these ships non exclusive. So basically the only difference that they've mentioned between the exclusive versions of these ships and the non-exclusive versions of these ships will be the fact that they have different camouflages. Okay, so let me look at this. You're going to just tell us that we're, we can be happy with a different camouflage rather than a unique ship for all these battles that we've put in, for all this hard work and dedication we've put into these game modes, and you're just going to say, fuck it. Let's give these ships to the masses. That's how you kill a game mode right there. That's how you kill anybody's want to play your game mode, to put in the stress to get these ships, to put in the hard working time, when they can just go earn that ship in randoms at some point. Where is the draw? How are you gonna keep people coming to these game modes if all you're gonna say is, yeah, you can have the ship for a little bit for exclusive exclusivity? And then we're gonna offer it to the masses with a slightly worse camouflage. Yeah, if you're playing ranked for the ships and they start doing this, you might as well just stop playing ranked. It's honestly looking like that's what they're going to do. And as soon as it happens, I'll be interested to see if these cues for these quote unquote competitive modes just flicker out and die. Because it's honestly sad if they're going to do this. But I digress. Moving on to the gameplay aspect of this. The big one that I wanted to get right off the top was detonations. Detonations are the bane of ranked. 
because as soon as you detonate, whether you had flags or not, to stop that, you are the uh, bottom player dirt on the shoe of your team. They will sit there and they will rag on you for the rest of the game for not having that detonation flag and they will just beat it into your head that you need that flag to play because you cost them that game. And they do suck because it puts your team down one ship and it's only a seven ship game. So it's, it's, it's a horrible aspect. And while it's okay in random sometimes, it's just terrible to see in ranked because you really need that ship in order to do anything. And when the whole enemy team's running anti debt flags, you're not gonna get that aspect back unless a cruiser decides to show its broadside to the your team or something stupid. I don't know. The next thing I want to get into for gameplay is carrier balance. Yeah, the big elephant in the room. They were banned from clan battles for this, but they aren't banned from ranked because it is basically randoms. It's so bad you see players actually skip queue because there's two carriers in queue. They're waiting for that game to pass over unless they get instant queued so that they don't have to deal with carriers, so that they don't have to run that full anti-aircraft build in order to stop that carrier from ruining their game. And going off that, because now you're putting less players in queue, nobody wants to play CV in the first place because if you, if you lose you're just going to get ragged on for causing your team to lose because you're the only CV that could possibly be in there, even if you get outplayed. I wanted to go into match rigging based on this because it did come up once or twice this season. Whether players were doing it or not, I'm not sure, I never really encountered that but I heard quite a bit about it. Now, match rigging, what is it? Well, it's when you take a carrier and you queue another carrier into it. One of these carriers is a bot or somebody that you're just gonna, or it's an account that you're just gonna sit there and throw planes away with. The other one's you. So you're trying to put more influence on the match and you're putting the enemy team basically down a ship and one of the most influential ships in the game, AKA the CV, and you're basically just sitting there saying, haha, you guys don't get a CV at all. So you're losing the spotting aspect, you're losing the air war, all that. And then you're adding that to the enemy team. So now, now the team without the CV player is getting pounded into the ground. And it's, it is match rigging because you're, tr you're basically guaranteeing a win for you if you're that CV player, unless the enemy team is, you know, balled up with defensive anti- well, with defensive A, but carriers are so sparse that nobody runs it. They run hydro. So, yeah, it was slightly a problem from the sounds of it. Going off that, well, on a completely different tangent, is the team killing or AFK penalties. There really aren't any. Sure, you're going to be pink, but you can go into ranked matches when you're pink. Sure, you can go AFK, but you can still go into and queue into another ranked match. It's not going to affect you. So, you'll see players team kill each other. You'll see players, you know, AFK at the start because they think it's going to lose or they're, tilted, or, or they're tilted or they're raging and somebody said something mean to them or who knows what. Or even if they're just game spamming, you'll see pe people just go AFK at the start. There's no stopping that. There's no system that says, no, you can't enter ranked battles for this amount of time because you were AFK. There's no punishment. You just lose exp you lose some karma and you move on to the next match it's it's really sad that there isn't because this is supposed to be the quote unquote ranked competitive game mode but you have people team killing people you have players sitting there and spawn it's it i don't know it's it seems like there should be something done about that and it after eight seasons, you think Wargaming would pick up on that a little, that you need a little bit more than that. The other thing I wanted to mention, just going off of the less participation one that I mentioned in Community, is the slow queues. And this is due to the lack of player movement. This isn't as apparent later in the season, but it is very apparent in the beginning, when there isn't as many players at the high ranks. And when players do get to the high ranks, if they get the wrong player on their team, they get shoved immediately immediately back down into the lower bracket again. So you'll see this early, early on at the rank 10 bracket. 
and you'll see this later on at the rank 5. And it's just players who will get past rank 6, they'll be so happy. They'll jump into their first match at rank 5 because the other guys have been sitting there for 30 minutes. They'll get a team where they've got one guy who's game spamming and somehow made it this high so fast. And now they've lost because all the Unicums up are up there and the enemy team is full of them. And that one guy threw it for your whole team. And then they're back down to rank 6 and they don't want to play until all these Unicums are out of queue. So they're letting other players go past and get kicked back down. Which creates a sort of black hole in the queue where they're, people are just waiting. They're waiting for the right time for themselves to move up. And I, I do it. I'm not the best. I can't quite uh, compete with people. But I can easily say this season I waited for that rank 5 queue to fill up. So it wouldn't be so much, oh crap, I got this player on my team so I'm going to lose. Or, oh crap, the enemy team got this player so we're going to lose. I waited till it wasn't so much of that. And it's kind of sad that you have to do that. And I think I already mentioned this one, but the single player losses really cut into it. And a lot of this was just explained. It's that one player that is game spamming or one person detonates or one person suicides. And now that you're missing that ship and you're down on points and you're sitting on one cap while the enemy sits on the other, now you got nothing you can do. The enemy team's got seven ships in it and they're ahead on points. They're going to sit there, they're going to hold that cap and they're going to deny you anything. So now you have to push. Well, you're down a ship, so you're out of firepower. You can't catch anybody out because they're all balled up. It It's, I don't know, it's hard to say how to fix that one, but it's definitely a problem. And then I wanted to go into the save a star again. You can see I'm kind of running down the bottom of that community list a little bit, but more towards the gameplay aspect this time. So save a star, I already said it promotes the lack of teamwork. People are just aiming for the highest EXP value on a supposed loss, meaning they lost one ship at the start of the game. So they're farming the EXP, they're not playing for the objective. They're just sitting way in the back of the map damage farming. And they're sniping basically. They're sitting at the very max range of their ship, they're just trying to play shots to get damage, they're not shooting the destroyer. They're not shooting the cruiser that's in a bad position. They're shooting those battleships. They're shooting the ships that are on a cap circle. They're trying to just farm EXP. And then there's the save a star rigging. And this is something that came up a couple of times in games. It's where you'll see somebody say, ram me so you can save a star. And they're both in the same clan. Or they've been talking to each other the entire match. Or you'll see somebody go broadside for the guy in the same clan so that they can shoot each other at the end of a match so that the loser can save a star or that the other person can be higher on their team and get more exp and they'll sit there and they'll put their battleships broadside to each other or the carrier will fly planes over them and sit there and let planes fly over them and sit and not attack and let them just shoot them down for that extra base experience yeah you can you can kind of see where that's going it's kind of along the same lines as match rigging except you're making it so that player doesn't lose like they're supposed to. That destroyer that capped is now losing his star because you sat there and let the enemy Bismarck farm 40,000 damage on your North Carolina and then let him destroy your teammate in the cruiser because you didn't want to shoot your clan member. Yeah, there's and I haven't seen punishments for it at all, so it's kind of interesting. And finally I wanted to go back to the limited ships being useful and this is going along with the whole radar ships win games thing that was very relevant this season where the small maps would really force the radar ships to win because if you got on a team that was stacked with three radars while the enemy team had none your destroyers were invincible the enemy destroyers would not push the enemy team would not push because you're just gonna sit there and keep them spotted the whole time and this was very proliferant due to the small maps, but that's kind of a different aspect that I want to talk about next. As per the ships, I had a really good quote that I'll be posting up in the video from one of my clan mates named Edgecase. So I'll read it off to you guys. It's maybe not a popular opinion, but I think any attempt at running Suedo competitive modes in the mid tiers is going to have problems. 
The tech tree lines aren't made to be fully responsive to player skill at those tiers. They intentionally dilute player skill to mitigate the, infect the effectiveness of seal clubbers. S less so at 8, more so at 6. That leaves premiums, which tend towards the power creep because they need to sell to players who care about in-game performance, especially destroyers and cruisers that don't have the same name recognition to move units. I just don't see how they're going to reconcile th those things to make mid-tier ranked anything but premiums doing premium things. And this is entirely true. You're seeing players who are pulling ships just for their gimmick. Uh, Radar, Smoke, you saw Chapayev, you saw New Orleans, you saw uh, Mikhail Kutuzov. Those were the cruisers of this season. You didn't see anything else. You saw a few Charles Martel sitting there for farming damage, but those were the ships with the gimmick and that's the big thing here premium ships have gimmicks and that's why we're seeing a very large proliferance of those in the ranked queue you have the alabama with its ridiculous amount of torpedo protection ridiculous meaning good not in a bad sense you have the turpets with its torpedoes you have the mikhail kutuzov with its smoke flamethrower ability you have all these premiums with their gimmicks and then you have the guys trying to bring out an Amagi, which not a bad thing. Or you have the guys bring out the Charles Martel or the Mogami or something like that. They're not bad ships, they just don't have the gimmicks to compete and that brings it all back to that one ship losing the game for everybody else. So it's, it's more of a balance problem there because these gimmicks aren't being balanced for the maps. They're not being balanced to allow these um, ships without these gimmicks to actually play it it's just kind of a bad situation for that and I mentioned maps and that's just because the current maps that are in there right now despite them being the clan wars maps and they're brand new and the cap setups are cool they form a very stagnant stagnant meta extremely fast where you don't see people do different things you'll see the same ship lineups every time so you'll see the same strategies every time where the team will go for one cap they'll go for these two caps they won't bother with the other cap they won't make anything different they'll do the same thing over and over and over and over and over no matter who's on the team sure you'll have that one guy suiciding but your team's gonna follow the same plan every time because that's what the map kinda has shown to work they're not pushing that far objective they're pushing these two that they can get there and farm damage on as fast as possible. Or North was a big one for this. They'll take the A cap and they'll ignore B cap. And they're banking on them getting a catch or getting that cap first so that they have the lead so they can sit there in their spawn and camp. It's just boring. It's the same thing every game. And at, that, at some point you just know where to expect players. So you're just moving your ship to set up so you can shoot players in their spawn. And that's not the boring aspect. That's a decent player adapting. But it's the random players that don't know to do that. They're going to the same spot every game where they saw other people go. They're getting shot by the same ships every game. They're getting pounded in the same positions. And nothing's changing. And it's just very stagnant. So that's my thoughts on why ranked isn't exactly the best that's my kind of con list so I don't know did I miss anything am I wrong on some of these I know it was kind of a long-winded speech I'm almost up to 30 minutes here but I don't, I don't know it's just it's really weird how this mode has evolved into something that isn't ranked like I said in the beginning it's 7v7 randoms with extra prizes and the prizes aren't even that good so what do you guys think? I'd, I'd really like to hear your opinions on this if you made it all the way through my little speech here. Anyways, thanks for listening guys. Hope you have a good one. Good luck out there and see you next time.